We're gonna talk about tree hugging real quick. I mean, here's the thing. I had this realization as I was walking the garden and I was actually interacting with my trees. You know what I'm saying? And one of the things that you could ask yourself this is like, you know, especially, you know, for tree hugging hippies and whatnot, which I'm all for, you know what I'm saying? But ask yourself, why are you hugging the tree? What happens and how do you feel when you hug the tree? You know what I'm saying? Because even let's say if you wanted to research what actually happens scientifically when you hug the tree, all right, it says that it, you release oxytocin, uh, you release certain chemicals and hormones in your body that give you a feel good type of energy. You know what I'm saying? And this is actually something to keep into account that the tree is in your mind. You know what I'm saying? The tree is an extension or a version of you. Is it a more intelligent version of you or is it a less intelligent version of you? You know what I'm saying? Because we talk about trees being highly intelligent, but how intelligent is the human vessel? You know what I'm saying? We're perceiving this reality. These trees, these plants are all inside my head. <clears throat> Nature is neutral. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't give a shit about humans. Uh, it's basically more of an interaction. When we talk about green thumb, if I have a green thumb, you can have a green thumb with people. If you have a green thumb, I mean, the color green is associated with the heart chakra. The heart chakra deals with your soul experience, oneself. And if you really look at it, we're in a polarity matrix where we look at things as bad and good. Your heart is neutral also. You know what I'm saying? Yet we have these emotions and we also have uh, emotions that I don't think animals or plants have to some extent i'm talking about the extent of emotions that a human feels it's not felt by certain animals or plants in nature however they do have emotions but i don't think it's to the extent of human level emotions okay now humans have these emotions but they are more or less at times imbalanced emotions and they can actually take over you that's why they say i let my emotions get the best of me or take over me you know what i'm saying balanced emotions are a very powerful tool because you use emotions basically to manifest reality as well you know what i'm saying so let's say for example when you hug a tree who is to say you're not teaching the tree all right uh something it is not it, it has never experienced you know what i'm saying kind of like when you have a bug and i made the example that if you have a bug and you have an intent the type of interaction you may have with it a bug may land on you uh if it's by itself uh if it's whatever it may be i already said that when i kill the japanese beetles my intention is for them to evolve into something bigger uh you know we ask ourselves because i've heard this question from certain people like how dare us humans call anything a pest well that's also subjective it also depends on what you are doing you know what i'm saying if i wasn't gardening then the beetles I would not give two fucks about they're not in my way they i don't really care they're not doing it they're just there but the fact that i'm gardening and the beetles happen to land on plants or fruit that i'm actually going to eat later then they're considered a pest you may say i love children you love children and whatnot but you have a child and then they they go to school and they get picked on by certain kids those kids are going to be considered pests too you're not going to look at them with the same eyes these i love children you know what I'm saying? From that ego space. You know what I'm saying? It just depends on what you're doing. How do you manage and handle the situation from there? So going back to the tree. You're teaching the tree something that the tree doesn't know. Okay? Such as human level emotions. You're the alien here with the advanced piece of technology to actually teach and interact with things on this level to give it its advancements i'm talking about animals for example you give an animal all right the proper care and love whatever that may mean to you that animal can evolve to be a human in the next life okay if you uh nurture and you know care for your children with love they evolve into something bigger and better in life and in turn let's say even in the next life whatever that may be you know what I'm saying? I spoke and mentioned in the previous video about genetic weaknesses and whatnot. Um, once you become aware, you know what I'm saying? You can actually change all this. You're not a victim of anything. You can actually, this is the, the, the thing about this advanced piece of technology and machinery that you inhabit is that you can change, transmute, and transform things. You know what I'm saying? I look at the spirit for, for you know, for example, uh, where you're, you're, this vessel, okay? 
is making it possible for the spirit to be able to express itself here in this reality okay that's why when when you go to sleep but the consciousness is important to keep balanced okay and be grounded but then again not too rooted into this reality because then you won't be able to come out you'll forget what and who you are you know what i'm saying like i can have a green thumb for example with children with animals Right, where animals are just drawn to me in a positive way, or children actually end up liking me, you know. And the reason why is because of an energy, but it's a, it's a hard thing to explain. It's more of an aura type of thing. You see, the the child is not basically egotistical like an adult. It's no different than you know when you have a plant and it leans toward the sun, right? Is there the same level of consciousness and awareness that a human has? No, a child doesn't have the same level of consciousness and uh, abilities that an adult has however their body I consider like a plant where it just leans towards something that's giving it life like cells in your body always are going to be attracted to growth and actually go away from degeneration you know what I'm saying so the same way when you have plants and they sense your aura you're basically a growing light for them because you have a you're you're in your green thumb you're in your heart space when you're doing it the heart space from a pure heart space you know what i'm saying it's unconditional you're doing it with a certain level of unconditional love you know what i'm saying so if i'm around plants the plants are going to sense that i am actually in my heart space so i am in harmony and in tune with nature along with my solar plexus being on point as far as the gut microbiome and how bright that light within me is shining i am actually looking like a bright light to these plants and when i interact with these plants is no different than when you humans want to interact with aliens to get more higher level intelligence or advanced pieces of technology that these aliens can provide for you because you don't know that these things are all within you you know what i'm saying so whatever external things you're looking at as far as planets and all these things they're all your energies and if you utilize them in a balanced proper way then your interactions here will be positive or favorable let's say with with plants with because it's a reciprocity like when i step on the soil i'm getting negative ions i'm in turn giving positive ions right when the when i interact with a with a tree which is this the 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 realization I had with my zigzag tree, I went over there and I just touched the leaves and I'm noticing that I'm teaching the tree what human level emotions are. Like the unconditional space or unconditional love as we would call is growth. That's why trees look out for each other, plants look out for each other in nature. They like to huddle with each other and the reason why it's all in, in, the, in the interest of growth. It's not the way we look at it where we're being human level emotions. If See, they're not releasing the same chemicals that we are such as oxytocin and whatnot. I'm releasing oxytocin when, when I hug the tree, right? But the tree is actually receiving that human level emotion that it doesn't experience. Do you hear what I'm saying? So I'm teaching the tree something just like I teach my dog and I can help my dog evolve into the next level. Or I can help my child evolve into the next level. You know what I'm saying? Whenever we deal with uh, energies, whatever that may mean to you. OK, they're more or less needing us as much as you think you need them. You know what I'm saying? And I say think with that term very loosely. But in turn, they're nothing but a reflection of you. They're all your energies, all the mentalities like you're basically here in, in an in, as an individual soul. And you're basically expressing yourself as an individual. OK, but when you go to sleep, you don't actually come out. You actually go into your body. You're going into the water. You know what I'm saying? That's why you're, you're, you're held by an etheric cord. It's kind of like a scuba diver. They go deep diving. They're still connected to their boat. Somehow they got to come back into their boat. You know what I'm saying? Except we're looking at this as an, an intelligence, okay? Where it's ensuring its survival. So your body, for example, without you as the life force, it's inanimate. It just stands there or sits there like a tree. You know what I'm saying? But the moment that you go and you're, and you're back merged with your body... You're able to animate this body. This body is ensuring its survival the same way plants and trees want to grow as tall as possible and as big as possible. They, see, growing, there's no limit to growth. They want to grow as big as possible. So 
your body is trying to grow every day as big as possible but the thing is are you helping the body grow and the reason i say this is because you get rid of dead skin cells every day you get rid of dead cells every day cancerous cells things that don't matter your waste system needs to be properly operating so you can properly eliminate these wastes if not they just stay stagnant there and and rotting and wasting and then you're basically your body is nothing but a cemetery of dead bodies instead of it just being a clean environment where things are just flowing through it you know what i'm saying there's no stagnation there's no stenches there's no uh rotting or putrefaction in the in the in the body so the same way when when uh you're letting things you're in more in the flow in and out so you're in flow when you're doing things but your body is also in the flow okay so um i forgot where i was going with that oh so you know when when your body for example is your stu the stomach lining sheds every three days, right? This is why the power of fasting is important because you can actually, if your appendix is properly functioning, you can actually even repopulate your gut microbiome with the favorable bacteria. And then you go back after the third day eating, right? Where you're eating foods that are favorable for your for your for your digestive tract, like melons, grapes, uh, cantaloupes, honeydew, right? You know things of nature then now you're going to start to become a lighter being. You know what I'm saying? Your perception, everything, your brain lights up, everything opens up because your gut's connected to your brain. You'll have a wider level of perception where I'm not saying that people who eat not like that, they're, they're going to have a narrow level of perception. But also that comes down to how strong your constitution is and um, your belief systems and all that. Because aside from a physical way of expelling things, it comes down to a metaphysical way of expelling things. Meaning clearing your mentalities, reprogramming your mind with shit that if, if, if that's going to be of value to you. If you got things in your systems that are not favorable to you or not favorable, favorable programs, then you need to eliminate those programs and re- uh, reprogram it with something else but in order for you to program a new program you have to get rid of old programs okay you cannot put a new program on top of an old program you have to take the old program out right so with the body is the same thing so you know let's say for example somebody has acquired that level but then they haven't physically done it they can still get to that level but how much more of a capacity can you get to if you just basically do it from the inside out as well okay so physical fasting clear out your physical body and get your physical body primed and geared and it'll be even easier to for the mentalities and everything to be cleared out as well because you'll have better focus you'll have better uh more energy you know what i'm saying more life force all right so yeah i mean i'm teaching the trees i'm teaching the bugs i'm because i am the environment you know what i'm saying like we always talk about the environment affects the plants and whatnot and you know i put food right uh, uh, for growing for growth but it also attracts certain insects beneficial and unbeneficial insects from my perspective depending on what i'm growing see all bugs are beneficial but if i'm actually doing something and it's in my way it's considered a pest you get what i'm saying so i'm doing it from a neutral standpoint right but i am also making sure that my intent is toward growth at all times so if i'm hugging a tree the tree Okay, is giving me very useful, okay, information that on a physical level I'm not aware of. But I'm giving the tree something that it's not aware of on a physical level because I am a higher level intelligence. Okay? And this is a law of reciprocity, it's a give and take. You know what I'm saying? So it's not that like that's why it comes down to people worshiping the sun. You don't worship the sun, the sun you look at the sun, you're basically looking at yourself. All right? The sun needs you without your observation of the sun the sun doesn't even exist okay the sun lights up your reality the perception of amount of the amount of perception that you can perceive from the light that the sun is giving you is all subjective to you how much of this reality can you actually perceive right it's all coming down to you okay because you think the sun is giving you limited amount of light in actuality when you open your eyes you animate this reality the sun gives you the percentage of light that you are actually able to perceive. It's no different than if you're trying to manifest a reality, okay? And you as the embodiment of God have a visualization, that visualization is already there. It's concrete. It's there. It's true. You know what I'm saying? However, we're in a polarity matrix. So the fact that you've, and it depends on the size of your visualization. If you visualize something big, okay? You may come across obstacles that are going to show you the total opposite of equal power to that manifestation. And if it rattles you and shakes you, 
then you may not be worthy of that manifestation. Because think about this, okay? For the stronger the hero, the stronger the villain. For every action, there's an equal reaction, right? So if you're trying to manifest a big dream, a big obstacle may present itself of equal power just on the total polar opposite end just to see if you can handle that. And if you can't handle that, what makes you think you can handle the big manifestation? Okay? Just like I made in the previous video the example about more money, more problems. It doesn't mean that you're going to have more problems, but there are definitely more responsibilities. And if you can't handle those responsibilities, then what makes you think that manifestation is something you deserve? This is where you have to balance out your needs and your wants. I don't want to make this video too long. I was just basically making this video on the tree-hugging hippies, uh, which I really love. I'm not going to lie. I really love tree-hugging hippies. And I am also just basically tying in a couple of other things that may be useful in this video because sometimes when it just flows, it just flows. So just do it. Uh, we'll talk soon. Like, share, and subscribe if you liked it. If not, then don't. We'll talk soon.